How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? Mr. Donahue here once again. This time we're going to take a look at ionic bonding and electron configurations. Our objectives will be to describe what happens during the formation of ionic bonds and describe how electron configurations change for metals, nonmetals, and tr transition metals during the formation of ionic bonds. So let's start. Ionic bonding. What is it? Moral story, it's when one atom loses an electron and another atom gains those electrons. So here I have sodium losing an electron to chlorine. So sodium was neutral, but it just got rid of a negative electron. So what happens to its charge? Well, sodium becomes positive because it got rid of a negative electron. Well, what's that mean for chlorine? It gained a negative electron. So what's going to happen to its charge? Well, it's going to become negative. So what's going to happen now is, hey, I've made these ions and now they're oppositely charged. So they're going to be very attracted to each other. So now they're going to form that ionic bond right there. They're going to become attracted. They're going to pull in closer and they're going to hold on to each other to like opposite ends of a magnet. So ionic configurations, some rules. Electrons are removed from the highest available n number and are added to the lowest available n number. This generally achieves, achieves a noble gas configuration. So if we take a look at sodium, sodium's Electron configuration is 2-8-1, or for its quantum configuration, it's 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s1. And if we wanted to give the abbreviated uh, configuration for that, it would just be Ne and then 3s1. And then, curious enough, what happens for Na+, plus? well, in order to become Na+, plus, sodium has to lose that electron and become positively charged. So what's going to happen to the configuration? Well, we're just getting rid of that 3s electron right there because that's the one we're going to lose. And we end up with a configuration that's the same as neon. So let's talk about chlorine. Well, chlorine is 2-8-7, but then it's gaining this electron, right? So it's expanded configuration. Is this 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p5? And if we want to abbreviate it, because yes, please, it would be neon and then 3s2, 3p5. Well, chloride ion, it has to gain that electron. So now it's got one more electron. Where's it going to go? It's going to go into that 3P sublevel, filling it, becoming 3P6. So now its configuration is the same as neon and then 3S2, 3P6. Wait a second. I know of a noble gas that has that exact configuration. It's argon. So generally, this achieves a noble gas configuration. But for transition metals, they're, they're difficult, right? So you still follow the same rules for forming these ions and changing their electron configurations. But let's take a look at iron. So we have iron, its configuration would be AR, 3D, 6, 4S, 2. So the lost electrons are going to come from the highest available N, or the highest uh, principal energy level that has an electron. So for Fe, it's going to be this 4S, right? It's the highest N number. And typically, for transition metals, it will be the S sublevel for the highest principal energy level. So to become Fe plus 2, we more or less just lose these two electrons, and we're left with AR 3D6. If we have to lose more electrons, then we're going to move into the D sublevel of a lower N, because now that's the highest energy level available. So yeah, so if I had to get Fe plus 3, well, I have to lose one more electron, so this 6 is going to become a 5, and that's that's what, what you get. So a word about transition metals. Their electron configurations get weird, all right? It's kind of obnoxious. Sometimes it's easier to start putting electrons into the D sublevel before having the S sublevel full. So here's an example. For silver, you might expect, all right, if I were to follow, you know, the diagonal rule and do all my filling, the 5S2 is going to be full, and then I'm going to start putting electrons into the 4D sublevel. But what you actually end up getting is you start, you have a full D sublevel, for the fourth energy level and an unfilled 5s sublevel. And again, the reason for that is sometimes it's easier to fill that D sublevel than to pair them up into the S sublevel. So still, when you're doing and changing their electron configurations, you still remove electrons from the highest available N first. So if I wanted to get like AG plus one, I'm still going to lose this one electron. Now, you won't get the noble gas configuration because transition metals are difficult. They like to make things difficult, right? You would end up with this configuration for the silver ion, but you still follow the same rules. So the octet rule has its limitations. So it's not, you know, I guess it's an exception. So summarize, describe what happens during the formation of ionic bonds and describe how electron configurations change for metals, nonmetals, and transition metals during the formation of ionic bonds. Hope you found that helpful. See you in class. Okay, bye.